Pennsylvania, a new suburban community of 60,000 people midway between Philadelphia and Trenton, New Jersey. With its giant shopping center, winding lanes named for flowers and trees, it is fairly typical of communities all over America where families are pursuing the American dream to give their children a better chance in life. Levitt Towners are people of modest means. Nearly all are young people. A large proportion are veterans. There are few social agencies, and while many religious groups have established churches, they have not yet had time enough to develop programs to adequately serve the community. Most Levitt Towners are proud and happy in their new environment. For many, it is the first house of their own, and it represents a major financial investment. Social life is mainly confined to visits with the neighbors. Occasionally, there are community-wide events, but it's too early yet for most residents to become identified with the broader aspects of community living. Levittown was built by one man for whom it is named. Like many community developers, he set the initial policy and provided a minimum of essential services. When the houses were sold, naturally he went to its own slender resources. In August 1957, Levittown, Pennsylvania attracted international attention when violence erupted as William Myers, Jr. and his family moved into the three-bedroom house at Daffodil and Deep Green Lane. In almost all respects, the Myers family is close to the Levittown norm. They have three small children, the youngest only one month old. Myers served for two and a half years in the Army and was discharged as a staff sergeant. He works as a laboratory technician and is studying for a degree as an electrical engineer. His wife, Daisy, is a college graduate. The Myers home is modestly furnished and their late model family car was bought on time. They are very close to the Levittown norm except in one respect. William Myers Jr. and his family are Negroes in an all-white community. Levittown reacted in a number of ways to the new arrivals. There were several hundred who congregated on the street in front of the Myers house and there were those among them who felt strongly enough to throw a rock through the picture window. But there was another a large group who were repelled by this kind of behavior and organized to help Levittown accept its first Negro neighbors. The vast majority of Levittowners went peacefully about their daily activities. But in the stores and at the schools and on the front lawns, Levittowners discussed the Myers. Well, I first read a small article in the newspaper that the first colored family had moved into this community. And um, following that, why I began to hear on the radio and read in the newspaper that there was some disturbance around this home that these uh, people had bought. What was your initial reaction? I was terribly shocked to find that there were people in this community who would be so violently opposed to it. I rather thought that everyone would just accept it as I would. Was the community prepared in any way for the entrance of the first Negro family into all white Levitt town? Well, there was an attempt by uh, a group of ministers who formed a group called the Human Relations Council, and they were just getting started on their work. I don't know how they expected to ultimately accomplish the purpose of educating everyone, but I know that they had a, an open forum one time and uh, just within the last three or four months and the results of it were published in the paper do you feel it was effective <laughs> no i'm afraid it was just a drop in the bucket it, uh, not very many people even read or were aware of the article or of the meeting that preceded it although there had been little interest in the formation of the human relations council some weeks before the Myers became the main topic of conversation for the people of Levittown within a few hours of their arrival. In the absence of fact and authoritative information on a situation like this, rumor and gossip sweep through the community. As the stories pass from one person to another, because hardly anybody knows the truth, what everybody is saying becomes the fact. Oh, I heard lots of rumors. I was busy. <laughs> 
telling people not to believe them. What kind? Well, that they'd been sponsored chiefly. I think people resented, after they heard this rumor and believed it, they resented feeling that uh, some outside group had deliberately moved these people in, that they were sponsored and paid by an outside group to do this very thing. And uh, I had been told on good authority that that wasn't true at all, and uh, so I told people that it wasn't true. Do you feel that understanding the facts of the situation will help? Oh, yes, I do. I'm sure that uh, a more reasonable attitude is going to prevail in this community, and I I'm, I'm, have great faith in the people here, and that they'll, uh, they'll soon find out there's nothing to be afraid of. Some view the incident calmly and indicate acceptance of the fact. But for others, the Myers moving into Levittown constitutes an infringement of their own liberties. And under the impact of this situation, they react with anger and force. What they say reveals their deepest fears and frustrations. Why did you select Levittown to live? We were looking for a place to buy a home. We looked at Levittown, and we liked the homes here. We liked the advantages that Levittown seemed to offer in uh, comparison to other cities. And we understood that it was going to be all white, and we were very happy to buy a home here. How about your children? Have you talked with them about the Myers? We have tried to keep uh, the discussions away from the children. Uh, I, figure, I, I feel that it's something that uh, we adults should solve without bringing the children into it any more than we have to. We're doing it for the children, but I don't feel that they are old enough to understand the problem as it is. Do you think a Negro family moving here will affect the community as a whole? Definitely. In what way? I think that, well, the property values will immediately go down if uh, they are allowed to move in here in any number. Can you give a basis for that judgment? Yes, we used to live in Washington, D.C., and we saw a very good example of that there. The repetition of an experience that was distasteful. Is there to be no escape from living near Negroes? And what of the dream of middle-class respectability? If a Negro family can afford what you can afford, how do you justify your feeling of superiority? The illogic of one's own position becomes apparent, and in self-justification, the old tribal myths are invoked. What other objections, aside from the effect on property values, do you have against the Myers? The whole thing centers around the word integration. Well, as Mr. Myers said, because his home has been anything but peaceful since he moved in. He's got three children, and uh, evidently he feels that they will be accepted socially. And uh, I don't feel that they ever will be. But the whole trouble with this integration business is that uh, in the end, it probably will end up with, with mixing socially. And you will have... Well, I think their aim is mixed marriages and becoming equal with the whites. But the only way they're going to do that is by education and by bettering themselves, not by pushing in the way they have here. Do you intend to move? At the time, no. It's a pretty impossible situation. We have, uh, we have our home here, and if the colored move in and run real estate values down, there are a lot of us the GIs particularly, who are going to be more or less stuck with their homes. As the lines are drawn, those on either side become more adamant. Tension develops and feeds on suspicion and mistrust. What has been the effect of the Myers coming here? Well, it's, it's created a great deal of tension, not uh, among the neighbors, because we all feel the same. But uh, it's naturally made everyone tense in their home. I mean, this, this is affecting our homes, and uh, it's bound to create tension. It's the subject that's talked about all the time. But there are others who are for the Myers? Yes, I've read about them. For what reason, do you think, do they support the Myers? Frankly, I don't know what reasons they can have for it. If there are homeowners in Levittown, I don't see what reasons they can have for it. Do you think Myers will be able to live here comfortably? Comfortably? No. 
What course of action are you going to follow? I'll do what I can uh, to help to, to get them out legally and peacefully. And as far as accepting them socially, if that's what you mean, I could never do that. To take sides in such a situation is more than a matter of one's own conscience. What a man believes becomes a subject for community debate. For those who believe a man has a right to live anywhere he wishes, the answers are simple and straightforward. Has this affected your relationship with neighbors? No, we've discussed it freely. We found people for and against, but we've tried to keep, uh, keep it being discussed. That was the important thing. Have you heard any rumors? Many, many. I won't repeat them because I don't like to repeat rumors, and I don't think it's fair to keep them alive. Do you think rumors contributed to the reaction of those opposing the Myers? Uh, surely they did, but uh, we had some very interested citizens here who uh, pledged themselves to a fact-finding group, and they tried to dissolve those rumors as quickly as they were started by facts. Do you think the Myers will be able to live comfortably in Levittown? I think so. I hope so. I think the majority of people here will uh, grow accustomed to it and uh, realize that, oh, they, are, they can be good neighbors, which I'm sure they are. And uh, I think the majority of people here are not vi the violent, um, well, violent group that we have heard so much about. Do you think the Myers staying in Levittown will affect property values? Uh, I don't think that the Myers have anything to do with the um, property decreasing or increasing. I think it's purely a white problem, not a Negro problem. In what way? I think it is the feeling of uh, the majority group which will influence the property, not the minority group. Those who want an integrated community take their stand based on their own deep feelings of what a community should be. Do you feel that the Myers will lead to large numbers of other Negroes coming here? No, I don't think so. I think that um, there will be a, probably a normal um, entrance and uh, not a deluge. I mean, people who, who want these homes will come here. It's not um, what people say that... Um, Oh, in flux. There won't be any such thing. There'll be a normal, I, I hope, I hope, because uh, I would like to see an integrated group here, and I would like to see, uh, well, my child, and I hope my children go to uh, and live in a group that is representative of the world, and uh, not being an integrated group, it is, it is not now a representative of society. Um, of course, we've all discussed this, and we've all said that the, um, answer to the problem is eventually when you find that there are no more areas to which a white person can move without uh, having a Negro family in. Well, that would be the, the best uh, end that there could be to uh, degradation, and it is probably um, something that will happen in the future.